no plan B. I'm gonna be a freaking actor. I wanted to look like Wonder Woman in 1983. Not the underoos that I got for Christmas. With the camcorder. Yeah. Where you put this big VCR thing in the, in the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my name is David. This Hello, is David. I, Hello, this David. Is how I really talk. <laughs> Welcome to the Geek Out. So glad to have you here. Uh, welcome to the Geek Out. Thank you so much, David, for taking time out to join us so that everyone can get to know you a little bit more. For those of y'all who don't know David, he is an actor and he was cast for the role of Shocker Goon in the recently released action film Gunpowder Milkshake. We're going to talk a little bit about that uh, with him. He's also a former Marine. And before that, he was a Division I college football player for ECU. He's a pirate. <laughs> so, David, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, hello, cosplay peoples. I have no clue what cosplay is. This is actually an interview from me to you because oh. I thought it was really exciting to... Um, to gain a cosplay fan. I always seen it, but I, I yeah. didn't know nothing. A little bit about me. I'm from actually born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. But nice. my father was a, he was in the military. So I'm a military brat. So I say that I, I lived everywhere from Hawaii, Mid North Carolina. I lived in North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, I can talk like that down in North Carolina and South Carolina, you know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> I got that little twang there. And, and I'm a Southern girl too, I know. <laughs> and then that Boston, uh, Boston, Massachusetts, New York. I used to live up in New York, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. no, I don't know nothing about Brooklyn. Uh, California. Yeah, man. Spent some time there. I, yeah, as a military brat, you, it's you get exposed to the world, but then at the same time, you don't really have a home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, the saying in the military is home is where you hang your hat. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. gun, I wanna talk to you about the film Gunpowder Milkshake. And um, it seems like that's the, like the biggest role that you've had to date so far in your acting career. Um, what did you do leading up to that over the past seven years since you left the military? Uh, several unpaid student films. <laughs> <laughs> Experience. No, I, it's, that's a really long, that's a, that's a very long loaded question for me. Yeah. Because, I mean, you're talking 2014 is when yeah. I got out to now 2021. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you've put the work in, you really have, um, and you seem to have done well, um, rather quickly um, for someone who started out in seven years, like, cause normally it takes someone who's just started a lot longer. Um, so what's your secret? Like, what, if, what what's the secret to David the fourth? Like, what did you do? Just positive thinking. Mm hmm it's very important attract that energy you know yeah. the energy that you put out is the energy that you attract back and um I totally believe that I really think it was finding exactly what I wanted to do I mm -hmm. mean once you you tune into that frequency kind of like what you did yeah uh, and you just say fuck it this I would just do it. Like, yeah, exactly. And you, make it in, in, and you make your mind up because all these thoughts are like, oh, I should do this. I should work for corporate. I can make money. I can, mm -hmm. I can do this. I'm, I'm, I'm a military veteran. I can get a good military veteran job. I can do this and that. And all the noise kind of just, you know, when you start to let your intuition drive, mm -hmm. whether you think, whether it's a bad decision, good decision or whatever, it just do it and then yeah put it put it out there to manifest yeah. it yeah. yeah do you feel like what every time you would think about something it seemed like you put the work into it as well those opportunities just seem to kind of come along to you like you would meet someone and they would you know open you up to a new opportunity 
like from positive thinking and working hard and just taking all the right steps. Yeah, I think you said it like it, you got to put yourself out there. So, I mean, if you're a football player, a hockey player, you got to you got to put yourself out. Mm -hmm. You got to go to the hockey arena and do something. Uh, if you're a fitness instructor or something, you got to go to those places or I mean, in COVID times, I guess you have to transmit yourself to these um, to these uh, platforms. Yes, exactly. But you have to put yourself out there. So yeah. once I decided, you know what? No plan B. I'm going to be a freaking actor. Put pictures of rock up on there. Yeah. Put all this dream board. I put my car up there. Everything. I was like, no plan B. It's it's right there on my. Uh, yeah. On my, you, you created your destiny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I put no plan B, no turning back. Didn't know how the fuck I was going to get there. Yeah. No clue. Yeah. No clue. Yeah. Just but really believed in yourself. That and, and then Support. I just started putting myself out there. I yeah. started uh, reaching out to agents, talent agents. Everybody said no except for one or two. And then that one is the one that yeah. helped me. Shout out to... Crawford Talents, by the way, Caprice, you know what I'm saying? No <laughs> models keeping me down. <laughs> um, did you take any classes in acting after you got out of the military to refine that? And, and a, a back, let me back up real quick. Did you ever want to do acting when you were in high school or in college? Like, was that something on the horizon that you thought of? Because we grew up in the 80s. Big, it was like the big cinema that, you know, that decade was huge for big blockbuster films. We all dreamed of being a movie star. Like, did you have those aspirations when you were young or was that something that you decided later in life? No, I, I think I always had it. Mm -hmm. If you look at the home videos that my father <laughs> took VCR with the camcorder. Yeah, the, <laughs> and he on your this, shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> he these things. And then I remember he put this big VCR thing in the, and the thing, yeah, you can hear it rewind. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, bringing back so memories. Look at all those home videos. Uh, my dad would just pull out the camera, and I would be front and center in front yeah. of the camera. So you just had you had a natural ability. Yeah, just kind of doing Michael Jackson dances or whatever, just performing. And so I think in high school it was more of a dish distraction you know like mm -hmm. I, I kind of knew that I wanted to do that but yeah you're distracted with life like oh you got to get a good job you got to get a good degree yeah you got to uh, get a scholarship playing football mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah you know, it's like I, I think I always knew I wanted to do it but I mean you know life <laughs> life yeah I know I think it's um one of the things that I've realized in my older more uh refined years that mm. um looking back there's no reason why this couldn't have been started then you know but we're society teaches us oh you got to go to college you got to get a job you got to do this you got to fit into this cog um and a lot of us out there aren't we don't we're square pegs we can't fit in those little round cogs <laughs> so yeah. it's nice to discover that later in life don't you think I mean, yeah, because it's the, uh, you, you can't have one without the other. So, you know, I, if I didn't go through 11 years of the military right. in my experiences or East Carolina University, yeah. playing football, if I didn't have any of that, then maybe I wouldn't be here. Like, yeah, it shaped you to who you are today. Definitely. Everything you've been through has led you up to who you are now. Um, no, it's just... It's well, I'm fascinated with your, with your, with your biography, just like your story of, it seems like you've lived lots of lives already. You got lots of hats. <laughs> I, didn't, um, I didn't even answer your question. So yeah. So uh, back to formal, like any education with acting. Yeah. Cause uh, in the answer is no. <laughs> wow. No natural talent. 
I would say um, I was an actor in the military. I always felt like I was wearing the hat. I was, oh yeah, I know about, I know that feeling. I couldn't smile. Or at least I felt like I, I couldn't, like it was, it, you had to play this, you had to play this sergeant of the Marine Corps, you know, and uh, this, this emotionless robot sometimes. And that was an act. Yeah. That was an, that was an act for me. Um, so that was your, that was your acting training. I think, I think so, because a lot of the roles I get is, a uh, is military or some, some type of, I don't know, some type of dude like that, you know, so. Like a take charge kind of guy. Yeah. With a presence. That's yeah, what definitely. The vice said, uh, I had presence. And that's yes, you do. <laughs> Um, so what was it like working with such talented um, artists making gunpowder milkshake like Nava and Karen and Ivan? Um, I know you got it looks like you worked really, really hard. And I've looked at back like behind the scenes photos, but it also looks like you had a lot of fun doing it. What was that like? Nothing but fun. I, I mean, it, I'm a physical person and the scenes that we had to do were physical. Yeah. But for me, it was okay. But like Ivan, uh, he was, I think he's pushing like over 60, 65. I don't, I don't know. Forgive me if I'm getting it. <laughs> he, was, he was really sore. And to put it in perspective, that, what, three minute fight scene mm -hmm. in the boat was three months of uh, choreography. I believe <laughs> like, it. I mean, it's well choreographed. That's what yeah. I, I love that about that fight scene. It's how choreographed it is. It's just like a beautiful dance. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. And even today, if Karen was to swing a certain way, I would react uh, perfectly to her, her move and Ivan would swing I would, and we would all dance. That's it, beautiful. It was like a big dance, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it had to it it had to be that way because Novat, we did one take. It, it was we only had one shot, one rolling shot. It oh wasn't, wow! He didn't want it to cut. He didn't want anything. There was some parts where he had to change the camera perspective for some moves. Right, right. That very first scene, you just see it rolling, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that was just one one take, one shot. That's remarkable. But I, yeah. I see the beauty in that. Cause sometimes if you cut and you get it's like you don't get that like momentum of the scene. That's beautiful. Yeah. You, you saw it at the beginning. You see where we're like yeah. based off. Uh-huh. That's going. And yep. we're just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was blown away by that scene, just like the violence and how beautiful it was and how funny it was too. It was really funny. Jackie Chan. Yeah. Did you guys have any music in the background for that or was it just strictly he did, business? He, he did pay, he played some music and said, try to think of this because this is what I'm going for. And he played this um, John Wayne uh, standoff music. Yeah. <laughs> Which is with the music, the soundtrack, the music's very, it's like, a, it's called a goon fight in the gutter ball corral. Yeah. <laughs> it's cute. That, that song wasn't, that song wasn't finished yet, but yeah. he played something uh, similar to that. I think it was a famous John Wayne thing. Okay. It's like, it's a face off. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. It's like that. It's like the whole, like, and Tarantino does that a lot. Like he, he yeah, kind of, yeah. with you know, the Django. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's that. That was a lot of the film. It, there's a lot of Tarantino esque uh, moments with the violence, which was really cute. I liked it. I say cute. Cute to me is awesome. <laughs> when I say cute, that means it's not like, oh, look at that little little bunny over there. Cute means it's fucking cool. <laughs> That's weird. I know. I'm kind of weird. I've been told that a few times in my life. <laughs> That's cool though. Weird is good. Different is good. Thanks. Um, so I, I'm really curious about the backstory of Shocker. Like, give me a little backstory of him. Like, how in the hell did he get mixed up with Yankee and the firm? And like, where did, how did he initially get his nickname, the Shocker? 
<laughs> yeah, it was a <laughs> shock. <laughs> Shocker. My Marine buddies have fun with that one. Your name, your call sign is the Shocker, dude? Oh, my God. Because <laughs> we used to talk about that in the Marine Corps. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, <laughs> shocker. Um, <laughs> no pun intended, of course. No, not at all. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, it's a, it's real. It's a real fictional backstory. It was mm -hmm. just something that Navat told told me to type up and to make, just so that I can have a little bit more substance. Yes. It wasn't it wasn't anywhere in the movie, but in my mind when I was yeah. playing the shocker, uh I kept it as close to reality as possible for me. So it would okay. be a real character. Yeah. yeah. He, was a, he was a former US Marine, okay. kind of disgruntled, kind of disgruntled with uh governmental jobs and he had he was just pissed off with the government system and how yeah. everything worked. So um yeah, uh, he he just left the city and went out into the farm. Uh, he used these cattle prods to to cater to his his cattle and his cow, and uh, he used to play with it a lot and stuff. Yeah, from the U.S. Marine. And uh, uh, one day he gets this uh, kind of offer, some weird offer. Um, to actually off somebody, but he didn't know it was like, it was like that. It was just, that's a, there's a big gap in between there, but I had to make a connection, right? And then, so it comes to find out it's uh, Paul Giamatti is the boss of this firm that actually put the hit out. And I liked it. I, I liked, I liked uh, that type of job. So I, I, he hired me and I started working for him for years. And whenever there were jobs where he didn't want any weapon, like messy stuff involved, mm -hmm. or where we had to interrogate something, he would call me in because he knew I had these these shocker. Yeah, these, the, these the cattle prods. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I would turn these things, I would amp these things up to where it's just super lethal. And uh, we would interrogate our, our people to get the money or... I would just shock them to death until they die. <laughs> just, for the, just for the fun of it. <laughs> yeah. And so I, that was my choice of weapon. And um, I also you see Yankee, the bat. Yeah. He used, and then uh, Crow with the, with crow the crowbar. Bar. Yeah. I love it. I think it's super cute. I love, um, it seems like, we'll see. I wanted to ask you. Uh, especially I like how Nava asked you to create this backstory to give you substance. Um, and it's really cool because you can kind of pull from the emotions of that character because you can kind of sort of relate to that character in a way. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. I was also, I was also I had a, a bad marriage to all of that. Oh, so. <laughs> it was this, I needed this. So this he, he, he needed a release of all this aggression that he had. Yeah, and like I needed this, to, I was a bad guy, you know? Yeah. So I didn't want to be too innocent and yeah. Yeah. It would work. I love his characters and I, I love the collaboration that you guys did together with that. Um, it seems like Navat is really keen on presenting women with a new and positive way, unlike a lot of like action movies from the past. I know you and I, brushed on this earlier um, when we were chatting, um, yeah. but we were talking about that. Uh, and you really wanted to hone in on that. And I would well, love I, to pick your brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to know your, your, what was your- view? Okay, so my, my thing is that I feel like this was the first time in a while that I've seen an action film that is up in a certain caliber of action. Cause I mean, it's, it's gory, it's crime, it's mobsters. It's like, it's all that stuff. But then the, 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 the heroes of the, of this story are women. 
And a lot of times when it's a woman, they're either really, really sexy. They're dressed in like really skimpy outfits hmm. or they, they're, they're, um, they have a, a male counterpart that seems to help them out a lot. So I felt like with this, he really portrayed the women as super independent, strong, every day, like looks like real women that you would run into on the street um, as superheroes to me. I mean, and to a lot of women, I think. Um, so I think that there was a lot of like polarizing reviews with the movie because of that, maybe. Uh, there seems to be a lot of an, an old ideal of how women should be portrayed in an action film. And I feel like some people were disappointed of course all the women and feminists were like hell yeah this is awesome <laughs> i mean and and going on that uh i think that's where it 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 starts to spill over like when the when the feminist says you know like hell yeah the men are uh oppressive and they take it to this whole new level where you know it's it's evil versus good but it's fair what you just said I, I i totally agree with every word that you said um i mean i could think of some female heroes in the past but like the caliber of the movie and like how Lavat um portrayed the the women and how they could be like superheroes of their own like a, yes. a video game that, that's pretty badass you know like yeah. you can you can literally make a video game and you could choose Sam or right. Uh, I'm ready to play that game. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you know, similar to that though, um, a lot of people were upset with the latest like Tomb Raider movie that came out. The reviews were kind of mixed on that too. Um, they were disappointed with the act, like who they got to portray Lara Croft because she wasn't like the voluptuous, like she was a more like real fit woman, like a woman who was, if she's out running in the forest, fighting people, that's what she looks like. <laughs> uh -huh. But they wanted, a, they wanted an Angelo Jolie. Uh, Angelina Jolie. Yeah. But I really love the last Tomb Raider so much so that I definitely cosplayed her several times. Plus I love Tomb Raider as a video game. That's another one of my video games that I absolutely love to play. <laughs> Yeah, I think I saw. I think I saw on your Instagram. You had. Uh, I I never saw the last Tomb Raider. I, yeah. I don't think I even saw the first one, but um, that's like one of the uh, movies that stuck stood out in my head when you said, you know, women are are like action heroes and stuff. Like. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny because there's like a 10 year gap between the two films of Tomb Raider. One was with Angelina Jolie, yeah. and then 10 years later a new one comes out and it's like a whole new scene, a whole new vibe. And I just feel like it's a trend now, which I'm welcoming. I think it's nice. Um, not to say I, I still like sexy women. I'm not going to lie. It's still nice to see sexy women out there with skimpy outfits on, but it's also nice to see the, the other um, side of the table as well. She was really athletic and, and the, what men had problem with that or like all the women had problem? No, I with think... That? I think men were looking for more like things to look at. <laughs> I don't know. That's just what, what I feel. That's my opinion. And my opinion is like, it does, it's just my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I, Tomb Raider, I think of crazy action and, and like Indiana Jones. Like, yeah. When you yeah. Watch Indiana Jones, are you looking for? men with a bulge in their, in their no and that's that's a perfect example because he was like kind of a nerd like professor you know yeah. but he was sexy in his own right like you don't have to wear a sexy clothes to be sexy yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, just have to be tough and know it, know who you are and being confident right that's what it is that's what i tell myself <laughs> that's what it comes down to yeah. oh Okay, so I love the backstory of Shocker because I'm one of those people that when I see a character, I like to know what's what's his story, you know? Like what happened to him? Why did he end up like that? So thank you for giving me that. Yeah, you're you're the only one that knows it. I mean, it's not gonna come out in the in the film. Well, unless he makes a prequel or something like that. You never know. That's the beauty of but, cinema. 
the VOD if you'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> we love prequels. Prequel. Prequels are awesome. Yep. Especially when you do a prequel of another of another character. Like, um, do you remember the show um, Breaking Bad? And then there was the spinoff Better Call Saul. Saul was yes. the lawyer. So that was a prequel to Breaking Bad because it was Saul before he became who he was in Breaking Bad. So I can see yeah. a sequel with Shocker. <laughs> that would be fun on the farm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's how the movie star saw. Yeah, that's your, that's your. <laughs> call the shocker. Yeah, call why are you called the shocker? Oh gosh. All right, so I'm going to get on a little serious note now, now that we're having so much fun, I'm going to change, change the mood a little bit, but um, this is about you and your friend who co-founded veteran, uh, Veterans Empire. So two Marines. Me and my buddy, we co-founded it in 2013. We started it. We, we found a subculture okay. that was military veterans, but we were still, we were war veterans. Like we went to Iraq, Afghanistan, all this stuff. But we were coming Illusion. back. We were young. We were like 25, 20, yeah. 30, 35 year old veterans, our, uh, military vets. Yeah. So we still wanted to do the creative things like we we didn't want to get a government job or anything like that we wanted to some of us wanted to act when we got out some of us wanted to do um just the entertainment part you know what mm -hmm. i mean and um yeah so we did that and we made a brand we put like this cool logo out and it was it it's it caught a lot of fire it was yeah uh, it was military veterans uh, pursuing their creative passion. Okay, that's it. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. And we supported, now we, we supported military veterans in giving them the brand. We did, uh, we had a buddy that was doing podcasts and everything. And then our tagline was, we're on our own fucking program OFP OFP um, yeah. fucking program yeah OFP and this kind of set us apart from a lot of military brands so it made us really okay. cool so that was the solution but the problem was we wanted to be on our own fucking program mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get it so, <laughs> so that was the solution and the problem because everybody still wanted to be on their own fucking program mm -hmm. and their own creative passion. You're or, using the art, like it's for, it's basically a way to support your fellow veterans and using the arts to, as a form of therapy. But I mean, therapy is one thing, like processing things you've been through. Like it's hard. Like when you've seen things that no one normally sees and you have to deal with people that you normally deal with that have never seen that it's, there's a lot of processing that's involved in self-reflection. And like, I feel like the arts is the perfect therapy for that, a way to like express yourself. It's a good outlet. I would, I would think um, I dated a former Marine and he was also a poet. And I, that was the first time I had, cause I always thought of Marines as being like tough people. Like there, you can't be, you can't be a poet and a marine like how does that coexist it can't but that was the first time i realized like there's a marines are people like all shapes sizes colors cultures everything and so that was the first time i really um realized how important art was as a form of therapy for people who have been through trauma and see that that is exactly why we started this subculture because I mean, I mean, if you fast forward, even if you rewind back even further, they had no outlet, like military veterans had no outlet for like, oh, you're a poet? Oh yeah, come to my my poetry slam or yeah. You know, they didn't have that back then. Yeah, and no. Like these cool brands. So we we really we really tapped into a subculture. 
uh, I'd like to say we were the pioneers. Yeah, it sounds like it. Definitely. Like that, the whole concept and subculture, like you're speaking about, um, which is another, it's great. Uh, this whole cosplay is a subculture, like the whole cost world and fandom. That's a subculture as well. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of the people in this community are people who have, you know, um, social anxiety or other mental uh, issues. And this is a great way for them to deal with it and to, it's an outlet for them. And it's a place, it's a safe place for them to come and be themselves and like express themselves for who they are. So that's one of the things that I really found attractive to this whole subculture of cosplay. I can see that because when we're at Halloween or something, it's that time to feel like- Yeah. Free. You, you can be another character. I think that's where it all comes from is that Halloween. I remember Halloween has always been my favorite. How, like yeah. Halloween was my favorite because it was like the one day of the year that I could be somebody else other than myself and to the fullest. And I wanted to go full out. Like I wanted to look like Wonder Woman in 1983, not yeah. the underoos that I got for Christmas. I didn't want that as a, I wanted the real costume. So <laughs> I think that's where my like passion stem is, it stems from that. But <laughs> like, did you make it or how, did you make the real costume or like? No, no. My, I mean, back. Do you remember underoos back in the in the eighties? Like uh -oh. it was the underwear and the t shirt it looked like Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and all that stuff. Oh, you didn't want that. You didn't and want no, that. I wanted like the I wanted to like the real like I wanted to wear what the real actress wore. I wanted to be like screen accurate. Like that's <laughs> at age five. Did you? Oh, you was five. Okay. Yeah, I was five. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Um, yeah, I, was I like, have I have I have really bad ADHD. No, okay. In case you're wondering. So sometimes my thoughts are just all over the place. Sorry. Oh, no, it's all good. So you were, um, and, but then you, you went to, you dressed up as Wonder Woman later, right? And I still have yet to dress up as Wonder Woman. Other things have, have kind of filled in my, um, my hero, like my role of hero, who I want to dress up for as right now. I mean, uh, right now I've been watching that show, um, Killing Eve, and I'm, I'm going to cosplay Villanelle. Like that's my next person I'm going to cosplay. <laughs> I'm excited about that. <laughs> Where do you get your costumes and stuff? Like, how do you get these things so fast? And I, well, okay. So that's a good question. I'm actually, uh, it's a, it's something, it's a specialty that I think that I've developed over the years of being a mom and being really like uh, accurate when it comes to costumes. So past Halloweens with the kids, we all do themes. It's always a theme. So we're either gonna all do, one year we did a Wes Anderson theme where we were all different characters of Wes Anderson movies. <laughs> and then we did like a super, like a DC, we did DC one, like a DC comic. So, so, I go to thrift stores, I go online, I'm constantly looking up to see what the brand of something is, sourcing, I, I've, I've did a video that kind of gives you an idea of the, the work that goes into me finding this stuff. Oh, um, okay. So screen accurate is the actual brand of clothing, like whatever suit you wore, the brand of it, if somebody really wanted to be screen accurate and cosplay you, they would have to find out what brand suit you wore what brand shoes you wore, what brand of shirt you had on and tie, like everything. So then they would be a screen accurate cosplayer. And how do you, you just, you just start Googling? Or research, you... research, research, research. It just takes a lot. It's, it's guesswork and research. And so like for my buddy, Ivan, yes. you, even, you even got hit like, where did you find this? Okay, hair? so I was like, I need to find a wig that has a receding hairline. Okay. So I Googled receding hairline wig. <laughs> you know, there was only like three or four. On the website instyle.com, they say Jeeves. alopecia is a type of hair loss caused by constant pulling or pressure on the hair follicle and can develop as a result of wearing certain types of wigs and other protective <laughs> styles, making some black women more prone to the condition. <laughs> 
I also found an answer to this question. This is okay. So this was, we talked about Google. And so my Google started, to, I thought it was Jeeves over here, but it was actually my Google home answering your question. My Google did the same thing. When you said something like hair wigs, my Google said something like it, it almost started researching. Yeah, be- that's funny. Yeah, so I found this wig and I ordered it and it took forever to get here. But then, so that's the thing. It's like little tiny details. It's little details that you can emulate that make the biggest difference in a yeah. cosplay. Yeah, I was so impressed when I saw... Uh, like I, I I was like, damn, she really knows what she's doing though. Like <laughs> when you did me and then uh and then you did uh Crow and uh Yankee, I was like, damn, like you take this shit serious, man. Yeah, I mean it is that isn't that is the art. That is the actual art of what cosplay is. It's taking it's so cosplay is a combination of two words. It's a Japanese term and it means costume and play or play acting. So it's basically, you are just an actor. You're just an actor that you go dress up as your favorite character. And then you go run around with your, your best friends and you're just freestyle acting all day. You're creating content all day. You're taking pictures, you're taking videos. And that's what cosplay is. (laughs) And they, they have these events. Yes. Uh, So yes, they have conventions. Yeah. And conventions have been held for I think the first convention was back in the 40s, maybe 30s or 40s, sci- when sci fi became a thing. Um, and then people started dressing up as their favorite characters and started doing this. But a convention is a, it's just this big <clears throat> gathering of people who have fandom of like it could be multi genre, like it could be anime, it could be sci fi, it could be television, it could be uh, manga comic book it could be anything anything that there's a character that's been created you can cosplay it and um there's also actors and writers and directors of the people who create the stuff that we cosplay are there and you can meet them and get your picture taken with them and talk to them um again you know and, and then you run into people that you see in costumes there's contests with prizes like you can, you can compete in a contest with your cosplay and the more you make it, like the more you actually hand build it, the, the higher up in the like totem pole you are. <laughs> right. And like the more accurate you, the more screen accurate. Yes. You yeah. Yeah. So it, the people take, they, and there's judges and there's celebrity judge. Like there's a panel of judges that you walk onto a stage and you got your costume on and you're into the character and you're acting and you're portraying you're and you get a cash prize and it's like amongst thousands of people competing and there's only three winners you know so it's yeah. it's fun you'll have to go to a convention at some point just to just to experience it you have to <laughs> you got me hooked it's just i if if i do it i would want to do it properly but that takes time and energy. And I would be going up against somebody like you or somebody that did like months of research on brands. No, see, that's where you're wrong because the beauty of cosplay is you can, it's like yoga. You start at your own level. And mm. what I've done, like the costumes that I have now, I've constantly upgraded over the years. I mean, the Yankee one and yours, I did this, t- but I've also been doing it for a few years to where I've gotten like the hang of it. But I started out at age, like, okay, I'm going to say I started out four or five years ago. That's when I started cosplaying and I didn't, I was, didn't know what I was doing at all. And I started at, and I've just, as I've done it, I've learned more and I've upgraded my, my scene. Um, But yeah, it's like a three-day convention. It's people stay in the hotel. There's karaoke at night. There's after night, there's after hour parties. It's fun. It's so much fun. I've heard of Com- Comic Con. Comic Con. Yeah. I know that, that played a couple times and it, it was really huge, but we I just walked past. Yeah. Past it. Did you see just, a bunch of people dressed up walking around in like yeah. C3PO outfits? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like Star Wars. A lot of, yeah. I guess, the, Star Wars was out at that time. And yeah, you saw stormtroopers and everything, but I, I didn't know 
that it was this huge, I mean, I knew it was huge, but I mean, I didn't know that, you know, how deep it went, uh, like the background, like how yeah. people are researching screen accurate stuff and yeah. building on their, their stuff. That's, that's yeah. pretty. Yeah, awesome. it's really fun. Well, um, I know you like Legos. I, I've kind of, I've done a little research on you. That little backstory, I mean, I used to do a little investigative work because I was a bounty hunter for a brief moment in my life. I'm and <laughs> you should be, you should be. <laughs> but um, I, I noticed you like Legos. Is that something that you've been interested in for a while or? Where did you get that? <laughs> I saw Legos in your background of you in a um, interview. Legos in the background of me. Do you like Legos? Yes or no? <laughs> Just kidding. I, I Answer the I, question. I think I like them. Um, this this dude actually after after the movie came out, uh, this dude uh, he made some Legos of the. Shopping. Oh, that's where the Legos came from then. And See, Sam, I knew I knew there were Legos, and I just had to pry a little bit. I don't know if I'm a, I'm a fan or like them, but uh, yeah, th we're gonna have like some shocker goon and uh, and Sam Legos and stuff. That's like nice. A That's so cool. I like I love Legos. Like I like the many things. I like to collect those. Um, yeah. Growing up, who's your who's who was your favorite like action hero? You probably don't even remember Street Hawk. Street Hawk. I do remember no, you don't. Street no, Hawk. You don't. Yes, I do. Okay, hold on. Street Hawk was a car or a bike. It was a bicycle or it was either a motorcycle or a car. It was one or the other. So remember Knight Rider. After Knight Rider came Street Hawk. And this dude was like, it was like the Knight Rider. It was a motorcycle. I know it had to have been a motorcycle. I yeah it was exactly it was the night rider of motorcycles yes I thought, I thought that was just the coolest thing well, motorcycles are cooler than camaros right dude i i thought it was badass <laughs> Actually, but then when i got older and got a motorcycle and crashed yeah. it i was like I like motorcycles <laughs> no. i, I want to talk about your photos and there's three of them the first one is you at the firm with with you sitting on the arm of the chair of the couch so I wanted to talk about that photo. You look so, you look like mm, you're ready. You're ready to go. Like you're ready to go. Um, tell me a little bit about this scene in the movie. That, that scene was badass because there's a whole bunch of extras in the background that you can't see. They're standing mm -hmm. out. And Navat said, Call in the goons, but it wasn't part of the movie. He just said, hey, we need the goons on set. And so us, us three started walking through the through the crowd of extras because we, uh -huh. we, like, we looked like extras too because we were all dressed like that, but we were yeah. goons. You're the, you're the goons. You are yeah. the goons. And uh, Paul Giamatti was with us and we, it was just this long line of goons and Paul Giamatti as our as the head boss and we we took our place. And what was really cool is Navat let us just sit in that chair any way we wanted to. And he was like, yeah, I like that, David. Like when I sat on the armchair, cause I didn't want to sit in the chair next yeah. to Ivan because I would have looked like a little- Ivan like a, is huge. How tall is he? He's super dude, tall. That dude is huge. So he's like, we, and he's big. He's like a big, he's like a tight end. Yeah, he's freaking huge. <laughs> and so when we sat on the, I, I, I was like, I'm not sitting next to this dude. I sat right on the, the armchair. Perfect. Uh, uh, the chair of the arm and uh, the armchair. And Novat was like, yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that, Dave. And so I was able to kind of sit so you can see me and like not, not yeah and it's a nice tear uh and then the next photo is my favorite it's like the first fight scene of the movie the best i don't know i have a hard time figuring out which one's the best scene either this one or the dentist office but this is the bowling alley scene 
you got your cattle prods that were those real were those like I mean I'm sure they're props but were they heavy like what did they feel like when you're holding them I'm curious real I had to train myself to shock me at a hundred no I'm just playing <laughs> hundred kilowatt no that's they what were, I call like, method acting they were, they were freaking light uh light uh lighters things. They were actually very fragile. Oh, so okay. It, it really was hard to swing those things around realistically to yeah. look like on a hit, but at yeah. the same time, be very careful not to well, break But you did them. a great job. That, that's your acting skills because they look like really heavy. And I mean, I saw you get shocked in your nuts and that didn't seem pleasant. <laughs> Oh, and the jugular too. You got shocked a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, this had to have been so much fun. I know, like you said, it took mo three months to get the um, chore choreography down for this fight scene, but it was definitely worth it. It's beautiful. The last photo that we're going to talk about is the, the dentist scene. And this is after you guys got worked by Sam, uh, after she kicked your ass and uh, you guys are in the, the dentist office. It's, it, it is a dentist office, isn't it? He does like, he does like yeah. underground doctor stuff and is exactly. in, the, in the after hours. I was, I was just, I, I wanted to make sure I got that because that's how, that's how I interpreted it. Yeah. Um, and that's Novocaine he shot in her arms, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, yeah. But yeah. that, that fight scene is hilarious. <laughs> but I love this. The, um, like, did you guys, did he, did Navat decide that you were going to be in crutches? Or did you guys like get the props? Like, like I want to do this. I want to do this. No, Navat uh, strategically put me uh, or chose me because of this. He, the shocker had to be athletic because okay. as, as you can see in the movie, I get the worst of it. Like, yeah, I, you I'm get like, your butt kicked hard. <laughs> and so I had to hold the guns no, nobody understands. I know, that. I can see you're holding guns and the crutches at the same yeah. time. And even on set, I was, I didn't want to complain, but I was like, yo, this, I don't know how I'm gonna do this shit. Like, <laughs> it, I think in Novak's mind, he was like, oh yeah, you know, he'll be fine. But I was barely holding on to the gun. And if you look closely, I dropped the, the pistol at least four or five times and the crutches a couple of times, but. That seems yeah. like it is a hard thing to do. That's, yeah. To, to hold this and shoot and, and do this and then start walking and stuff. It was so weird, dude. Oh my gosh, it's hilarious. Yeah, that, so that seems. Actually the hardest uh, week was, was the dentist scene. We shot this last and that was five o'clock wake up every morning to put the to put the broken, I had to put Just the to broken the nose blood. on. Yeah. The, I had to put like machines and lighting in me for the gun. Cause yeah. there was a in the gun to make these, these flash things. Yeah. Like all the, all the special effects had to be set up at each time. Gosh, and, and but it's crutch, beautiful. The crutches, the boot and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. That was rough. Yeah. But it was all worth it. Yeah, it was definitely worth it. And it's like the end result is a beautiful piece of, of art. <laughs> it's good. And you're a part of that. So thank you so much for being a part of that. It's beautiful. Are you ready to go on your first convention? Do you want to go on a convention with me? I want you to take me to a convention. How does that sound? Where would you have your convention if you could have a convention anywhere in the world? It would be on the East Coast because uh, my, my parents live in North Carolina. Okay. But I'm sure that they wouldn't have conventions in Charlotte, North Carolina. They have them in Raleigh. I went to a convention in Raleigh. Raleigh. Raleigh's not too but far. They're probably not that big or, I mean. That's pretty big. A convention, a convention, right? Yeah, yeah. They're pretty big. They're pretty big. Like Wait, probably 70, 80,000 people. Do they have this in Europe? They don't have that in Europe. They don't have these in Europe. Where? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And I tell you what, if I am ever in Europe and there's a convention, I'm going to drag your ass to it. I'm taking you and your wife. Me and my husband are coming to get you and we're going to go. <laughs> uh, we've been to Amsterdam. I mean, Italy is nice. Like on Europe side, 
Like if there's conventions here, it would probably worth be worth your while to come to Europe. Oh, and I'm definitely that is on my list. Um, yeah. My husband is British, and so he's his. My in-laws live in England, so yeah. we'll I will be in Europe back and forth in my yeah. life. So I'm definitely going to do that. Yeah. Um, so North I, Carolina. Before going to a convention in North Carolina. <laughs> no, I've been to I've been to a convention in North Carolina, and it's fun. I met some really cool people there. Um, I actually I met David Tennant there. He's an actor who was in doc. He was one of the doctors in Doctor Who. Um, uh, cool. That was fun. <laughs> um so friday night what do you think you dress are you going to be shocker goon every night are you going to try to be try to be um because you you do characters i've seen your characters you've got some <laughs> characters so i think you should and there's this there's a thing called original characters called oc and that's a thing too is you can create your own character in cosplay so. actually posted something i have a music video <laughs> A music video coming out next week of a little rap uh, video that I did. It's uh -huh. actually going to be on Spotify and everything. Oh, cool. It's a, I mean, it's just something little that got big. And Is, it, uh, are, is your name uh, with the rap, is it David the Fourth as well? Yeah, David the Fourth, but spelled with the R T H, like. Okay, like Arth. Yeah, Arth. And then R T H. Okay, cool. This, yeah, and that will be out soon. But it was just something that was on my wish list that I was like, I, I hope that I can at least have a song on Spotify, a rap song. Yeah, congratulations. That's awesome. And the characters are like military uh, people that I, I felt like I was in the military and, and what I'm talking about in the rap song. So. Okay, so those are your characters. Can you tell us what the song's called now or do, you have, or do we have to wait? No, it's called it's called D uh that DD 214. DD 214. That's a uh, discharge form, isn't it from the military? Yeah, you're on your thing. So every military uh person has to sign a DD 214 to get out. And I just kind of rapped about my experience. Oh, of, that's interesting. Of getting out of the military, what I experienced and and chasing down my dreams. Oh, I love it. I can't wait to hear that. That's going to be nice. It's just a short, it, it was a poem that, but it evolved, it evolved into a rap song. I think my, most songs are poems to begin with, don't you? Except for the ones that start off with music. But I really do think like it's, it starts with poetry, like lyrics or poetry. Yeah. It, it, I wrote it in Afghan when I was deployed to Afghanistan. And I, I wrote it as a poem and then, uh, 10 years later, I think my boy sent me a beat and I rapped to it. And then he was like, dude, there's a producer in Germany. So a, a dude in uh, Germany mastered the stuff and oh, yeah. we said, put it up on Spotify. So when's that out again? When, when's, what's the date? The 30th, August 30th. 30th. It's so it's right around the corner. So I don't have to wait too long for that. Thank God. Yeah. It's just my, it was fun. <laughs> That's fun. That is fun. I think that, I mean, that's at the end of the day, if you're having fun, that's all that matters, right? You, it's better. And if you're to, getting paid too, then that's even better. But like, seriously, you just need to have fun. There was a philosopher that said, it's better to be hated for who you are than to be loved for who you're not. That is so true. I'm so, I, I, when I meet people, that's a huge thing. I want to meet the genuine person. Like, I want to meet who you are. Like, what you see is what you get because my heart is right here. You know what I mean? You're just like that. I know. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was uh, Andre, Andre Gide. I think he said that. I, I love philosophy. It's beautiful. Um, Sisyphus is my favorite uh, story yeah. because I feel like every day I'm living that life. So the story of Sisyphus is he rolls the rock up the hill every day and it just rolls back down. I'm mm. like, what's the point of this? Why do I do this every day if it's just going to roll back down? But he found the beauty of the actual like being involved in the moment. Like, so every time he rolled it up, he's thinking different things. He's not in the same moment every time he's rolling the rock. So finding that, that's the secret of life. 
that's deep. I gotta, I gotta look that up. Yeah. So, I'm ready to go to this convention. Do you Ooh. have any other characters you'd like to dress up as? Ooh. That's the question. That's a good point. Dave Bond is, is a character. I'm I like with. Dave Bond. That's an OC character. You could definitely pull off Dave Bond there. OC character? What does that mean? Uh, Original character. It? Yeah. I got to get on this cosplay stuff. Yeah. A um, Dave Bond is a character that I'm working on. So Yes. Did you ever think you would um, dress up as a character and like where you'd have a mask on where no one would know you and no one could see you? You could like no one would know that you are the shocker goon underneath. You could, you could, you, and then you would run into a Sam who was dressed as a Sam at a convention. You could pull your mask on and be like, what's up? And you would <laughs> totally shock her. <laughs> that would be fun. Don't you think that would be fun? I think what would be fun if I could redo those, um, the actual cattle prods that I yeah. had. That would be a lot of work because they, they put a lot of work in that on those props if yeah. i can somehow recreate that and then uh bring those to the to the convention and play with those that would be sick yeah. you know? <laughs> did you see you know what i made mine out of right did you see mine the one i used when i when i cosplayed you your character was it the trash trash pickers <laughs> no no it was actually golf clubs it was a nine iron and an eight iron and i oh. saw that like the, the head off and then put like cardboard with aluminum foil on it what you actually saw uh, how did you get well the... i went to the thrift store and i got two irons that were like a dollar 25 each so it's like i you know i mean that's what i'm saying like sourcing is an art in itself yeah it <laughs> is so at these conventions there's also people that you meet that are famous like yourself so hopefully we'll be seeing you sitting. I, I serious, like you should come to these and you, you people should meet and greet you there. Um, but as a fan, if you're there as a fan, who would you like to meet and greet? That's a famous person that you haven't met yet. Denzel Washington. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Load of experience, man. I mean, he just keep coming. I saw, I saw flight and I, I wanted to be a pilot. Like, how does he do that? Like, he made me want to be a bad guy in uh, when he won his Oscar for uh, Training Day. Training Day. Oh my God! You get wet. I wanted to be a you bad. Get wet. I didn't know you get wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he made me want to be a pilot on co. I wanted to do cocaine after I saw him as a pilot doing cocaine. Like he, this dude is crazy. I know. Wow. What about the alpaca rug? What movie was that? Do you remember that movie he was in? He was a gangster. What was that movie? He American got mad because they, yeah. What was it? Uh, American Gangster. Yeah, he got mad about the alpaca rug getting messed up. He was mad about that. I always, I, I always remember these like catchphrases in a film. And it just, it brings me, it's like, that's my like, um, ear tab you know like when you read a book and you fold the pen that's like my little ear tab of like getting back into like mentally into the film so the alpaca rug is train is american gangster for me all right so the other thing you get to do at conventions which is really fun is you get to take a photograph you can pay to get a photograph with your favorite artist or your favorite actor and you in the and you can you can talk to them and they will like set up a scene so you can actually do like a scene in the photograph if you want so if you could have your photograph taken with a famous person and a scene recreate a scene what would it be it would be the rock it would be the rock i already have lines from kevin hart that me and him would look uh, i would look like the light-skinned curly version curly-headed version of kevin hart and it would just be hilarious because i'm small just like kevin hart and yeah and, and the rock is a mountain I would be like, did you see that, Ma? Did you see that? Oh my God, I did the thing. I did the thing, I did the Ma. Thing. I did it, I did it. <laughs> I did the thing, Ma. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. So that's that's one of the things, that, like, I think that's one of the things about the cosplay community that it doesn't seem in other entertainment communities where you get to actually talk to people who are in, who play the characters that you love so much. 
And so, and it's just, it, and it's great because it's, it's a symbiotic relationship because without the, the actor or the writer, we wouldn't have the fandom. And then the fandom is, brings you guys there and it, we, we work together. It's like, we're supporting one another. It's just a beautiful, it's, I say beautiful a lot, but it is a beautiful, 